it is really important that we begin to change the mindset of young people to know that your vote counts. They don't understand that the legislative arm of government is actually a co-equal arm of government. We have an uh, incredible amount of potential. Whatever it is I was doing because of my personal DNA, it mm -hmm. had to be of an international standard, which is what, seriously speaking, is all about. Welcome. For a long time now, all we hear about investing in Nigeria is FDIs, foreign direct investment. But recently, some young woman, young to me that is, called me up and says, do you know that we're going on this investment move outside of the country and we're talking to Nigerians in diaspora? And I'm like, huh? So I decided I'm going to have this edition of the show as the year rounds up about opportunities that exist in Nigeria, the potential of investing in Nigeria and truly, I'm speaking to all of you who are Nigerians outside of here, or even Nigerians who live here. So when we return, you get to meet my guest on Seriously Speaking today. Yes, welcome back. My guest is female. I'm proud about that because she's achieved quite a lot. A lawyer who is a real estate guru. It's my pleasure to welcome on set Udo Okonjo. Thank you. It's nice to have you, you know. Thanks. And this is outside of today's woman, having you on Seriously Speaking. You know, yeah, and how I'm did you delighted to be here. <laughs> when I call, when you called, I'm going abroad for XYZ. Did you ever imagine that we're gonna end up on set doing this? Absolutely not. <laughs> you know. I hoped, but <laughs> you hoped. Yes. <laughs> so but, I think it's an important conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how yeah. did okay, tell mm -hmm. me about it mm -hmm. once again. Okay, so we took um, we mean in fine and country and other stakeholders in the real estate sector. Um, we did a road show, um, which we themed Taking Nigeria to the World. What drove that? What drove that was the fact that, you know, I mean, this government has obviously been trying to attract, you know, foreign direct investment. There's been a lot of focus and emphasis on inspiring confidence and raising, you know, uh, business confidence um, in Nigeria. And, you know, we had seen over the last 18 months to two years that Nigerians overseas professionals, entrepreneurs had begun to take a more active interest in investing in real estate in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And that's a result of the challenges we were having here. So our Naira de, uh, was uh -huh. devalued. So obviously it was a good opportunity for them um, to begin to, you know, invest more here because their money obviously had more value. And so we thought, you know, those who were not investing, what was stopping them was the issue of trust. So we felt if we could put together a roadshow where we go out there and actually bridge that gap by providing them accurate information, current insight on the state of the economy, not just real estate, because I mean, real estate, you know, is a part of the economy. And so that's what we thought to do. Take Nigeria to the world, connect, you know, the positive stories while not whitewashing the negatives, because there mm -hmm. are some areas of progress, obviously, that we still need to uh, focus on. Isn't it interesting to find that the devaluation of the Naira had a positive side to it? Well, absolutely. And, and, and therein lies, you know, the thing that they always say in every challenge mm -hmm. lies an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And in every developing economy lies massive opportunities, which Nigeria obviously is a developing economy with lots of challenges. Mm -hmm. So the question, though, for you is you're in real estate. Right. It was already booming anyway. Right. So you couldn't, I mean, you really didn't need to do this. Mm -hmm. You didn't like, you couldn't try to sell real estate again because people were coming into real estate already. Right. But you wanted to do a little bit more. And well, so did that determine? I the kind of guests you had mm -hmm. along? Well, it was a combination. So, you know, tough times, they say, right? You know, bring out more creativity. Mm -hmm. So the year before we'd had this event where we, we called, we themed it, thinking out of the box. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we have been in a recession, and during a recession, some people give up and feel there are no opportunities, the opportunities have disappeared. But we felt that during the recession is a time to actually put on your creative thinking cap. Mm -hmm. And once we saw that, you know, the Nigerians in diaspora was a particular segment of the market that was being ignored. However, the challenges we had in the Nigerian economy was actually a good opportunity for them. We thought, why not, you know, contribute to the economy by stimulating the conversation, encouraging them with the right information. So it was, it was a combination for us, really, not just about real estate, but also creating a positive narrative 
for people who we feel have a natural affinity so tell me what happened. to Nigeria. What are some of the it great was, things that happened while you were there? It was incredible. You know, for us... Because you was, went to the UK first. We did go to the UK. We went to London um, first week in October, and we deliberately chose October first week because obviously our independence, independence is, you yeah, know, the first. the exactly. national pride Exactly. You know, the, you, you have this whole thing about, you know, um, the American dream. Mm -hmm. And so we've been asking ourselves, what is the Nigerian dream? Mm -hmm. How can we get more Nigerians, both locally and overseas, to actually connect with a Nigeria that is emerging. Because we believe that irrespective of all the challenges we have, there is a Nigeria that's emerging. But I don't know about you, but when I go overseas and I interact with some Nigerians overseas, some of them are very negative Absolutely. and pessimistic about Nigeria. Absolutely. Some are optimistic, but they're very small number. And so the whole idea of this was actually to show them the positives of the Nigeria that is emerging and then leave them to make their Did own decisions. I believe we How did. How were you rated, like 60, 70, 80? I would say 80 to 90%. You know, we have it on record. People were saying, you know what, for a very long time, I'd given up on Nigeria. Some, some lady who's a professional, in fact, she relocated back to the UK, having moved to Nigeria, and then moved back to the UK because she kind of gave up on Nigeria. And she said, after this event, she actually had a rethink. She said, you know, I really have begun to see Nigeria from a very different perspective. Well, that's nice to know yes. because people are wondering, who are those in the shadows? Right. Are there? Because I decided to get people who are experts right. in this area mm -hmm. to be part of this conversation. Right. So I'll take a break and then okay. we'll go and engage them. I have a PhD holder from the Pan Atlantic University right here. And I also have someone who is a real estate developer, an architect, who was in diaspora, but is right here in Lagos. We'll be right back on Seriously Speaking. Yes, welcome back to the set. Now we've unveiled the people who are speaking with us, experts in their own field. I'll start by introducing Paul. I give him the option of telling me what his surname is, so I know we didn't plan this. Paul. I'm Paul Wanibe. Hi, Paul. How, how are but you? I do know you're an architect. I do know you're the managing director for Landmark, that beautiful piece of business. <laughs> that lies right there by the sea in Victoria Island. Welcome Thanks. to Seriously Speaking. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And of course, my sister, you know, I call her Hetty, but to you, she's <laughs> Dr. Henrietta, right? Or you call her Dr. H. Yes, Dr. H. It's nice to have you on set Thank again. Thank you so much. Thank you. She's somebody that's so passionate about Nigerian development and Nigerian entrepreneurs and what they can do. So I had to invite her to be part of this conversation. Thank but you. let me start with Paul. Paul, you used to live in the UK. For how long did you live there? Gosh, all my life. I, wow. I was one of those um, fortunate or unfortunate people. I was born in the UK, but my, my parents sent me to boarding school in Nigeria at the age of 10. And you hated it? I hated it initially, but I loved it after. Came yeah. back and, um, and then the rest, as I say, is history. Yeah, you came back, but you went back to the UK to work, to do what? I went back to the UK to finish my education. To, mm -hmm. I did a master's there and, um, and then I worked there for some time. I worked in architectural practice and I worked in a property development practice. And I worked with um, Regis, um, the service office provider. So why did you come home to set up Landmark? Gosh, it's a long story, but... The, but yeah, you can give me the shorter version, <laughs> because I know you followed her on her trip, so she must have thought your story could resonate with people in diaspora. I, I do, mm -hmm. I, I did. So, so unlike many people, um, I, I, um, I think the world has become a global village, and, and very much so, um, I think the advantage is everywhere you want to be. And, you know, we talk about imports and exports. Um, Nigeria exporting some of its best citizens is an export, and the, but it only yields fruit when they come back home. So uh, my feeling was, you know, when you come to a place like Nigeria and, and you know, Africa generally, I mean, there's so many opportunities um, because so many things haven't been done. And I, I said um, on the last time I spoke, um, the, if, you want to, if you want to be successful, find out where the people are going and get there first. As I don't know, uh, real estate is all about that. But I think many industries are all about that. So that's what I did. I decided mm -hmm. to... But there must have been Nigeria. challenges, though. You can't tell me it was a smooth sale. No, absolutely. Deciding to come back here. No, there are challenges all over the world, and you've got to depend what the, you've got to decide what those challenges are, and, and how you tackle those challenges. Um, and I heard someone say earlier, every, in every challenge is an opportunity. So the, the challenges are huge because this place is very different from that place. Mm -hmm. um, but there are many opportunities here that don't exist there. Mm -hmm. And you know, for once in your life, when you do come home, is that you can stare people in the face, and you will be dis you will be taken on the basis of who you are. Yes, and what you know and what you can do, as opposed to whether what you're colour black, you are. You're white. Oh, or... Yes, absolutely. That sounds interesting, but you know, so people like um, Henrietta, you you say Nigeria is virgin land still till today, right? Huge, huge opportunities, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so as so... an investment potential, you were giving me an example yes. of something that happened to potatoes in Nigeria recently. Oh yes. So in spite of the fact that potatoes grow here in abundance. 
most fast food outlets were importing potatoes. But then in 2016, with the economic crisis, they couldn't find the, get the foreign exchange to import potatoes. And so they had to turn to local alternatives. And so Nigeria saved 62.8 billion. None of those outlets closed down. They simply We didn't even know them. because it yes. looked the same. Absolutely, absolutely. Because it's even better here because they're organic, 100% organic, and they were wasting. They say in just, for instance, they have potatoes in such abundance that it's, better, it's easier for them to leave them to rot when they bring them out to sell in the market than to take them back home in the evening. And yet we're importing these potatoes. And the, the other huge opportunities, Nigeria is said to have the best um, peanuts in the world, but we don't export peanuts, mainly because of our packaging technique. And this happens to a lot of our products. Share butter, our share butter is in demand the world over. But then if we don't package it well, we can't, we can't exploit the full um, economic mm -hmm. potential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same thing with indigenous fashions. African fashions are the, the rave right now abroad. But then we have beautiful pieces made here, but not scaled. So there are huge opportunities here that, are, that we, ha we haven't fully exploited. So mm -hmm. anybody who comes here and sets up a tailoring academy, for instance, will easily scale a production unit which can export things like what we're wearing now mm -hmm. to neighboring African countries, Europe, even and America. Even if Africa is our immediate market, that's big enough. Oh, exactly. I mean, even we, Nigeria. We meet, yeah, even mm -hmm. in Nigeria. So, for instance, if you, if, you want, if you wanted this piece in size 12, 14, 16, 24, you won't find it. So the person who made it just makes one or two at most. Okay, but I, I think I'll bring Udo in at this point in time. Mm -hmm. While these opportunities exist, Doing business in Nigeria doesn't still remain difficult. And didn't, didn't you have people asking you such questions when you were away? Well, absolutely. I mean, and, you know, doing business in Nigeria is very difficult. And that's why we were very low on the, on the, um, on the index, you know, as far as ease of doing business, you know, um, in the world. Good news, though, is that in the last, you know, few weeks, we've gone up about 20, uh, 24 points. What's off. responsible for that, though? The vice president and his team are doing a great job of trying to improve ease of doing business, and they continue to, to do things. So um, we're working that on That would it. include registration of companies. Absolutely. This kind of tax... I mean, Absolutely, tax, reducing um, the multiplicity of how taxes. How you get visas. How you get the, all those things. Yeah. So we're working on it. We're gradually becoming an easier place to invest. Yeah. So those questions, how did you answer them? By giving them the facts. I mean, one of the things we wanted to do by taking Nigeria to the world was to actually provide people accurate information. Because most times people don't invest because they lack good quality information. We also wanted to give them current insight. Mm -hmm. So we actually had Business Day, a publisher there, and um, um, His Excellency Mr. Peter B, who basically talked about the economy and what's going on. And so we gave them the real facts, mm -hmm. but also showed them what the challenges were, because I mean- We didn't hide anything. We didn't hide anything, So I mean, yes. how, how effective do you think that kind of sales are? And do you think this directing our communication about investment opportunities mm -hmm. to the Nigerians in diaspora is a good strategy? I think, absolutely. The three things... Well, that's we, just a, that's a stupid question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. But um, I, I think the three things I, I think we've got to do as, as a set of people. Um, so just take to headline news. Um, there's between 20 and $30 billion that comes in from the diaspora every year. So it's coming in anyway, yes? Can Where we, is it going? Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. Yeah, so exa exactly. That's exactly the point. They're buying so homes. All you need to do is look at where it's going, and, yeah. and the government needs to mirror that and make those sectors easier. And I to, I'll say to you that probably 80% of that money is going into three sectors. People, health, when people are sick, they send money home. Oh, Education, wow. when they want to train their relatives, mm -hmm. and property, when they want to buy things. Those are the three things that 80% of this money is going to. Now, if we want to be successful... Are you listing health, education, and property? So absolutely. if I had a business in health, set up a hospital, for example. Yes, absolutely. And that's a huge opportunity in, in, yeah. it's a, it's still in the economy, a massive, yes. It's a massive opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the, a lot of the, the Nigerians in diaspora mm -hmm. are professionals. So, so they, went, they went away, they, went, they got themselves educated, so whether it was engineering or health or, or, or property-related, or, or, or the humanities or arts related, um, they can come back and play in these three areas and many other areas, by the way. The and other 20% is, is still, is still quite, quite yeah. big. So what we do need to do is, is try to find a platform where people, an organized platform where the diaspora can pool their resources easily. Um, and, and I think what Nigeria doesn't lend itself to properly at this point in time, and that's probably because of the ease of doing business, which I'm delighted to, to hear it's, it's going it's up, improving. Um, yeah. is 
is allow the diaspora, who, who, best, who are a lot more organized um, in terms of how they think yeah. about um, sending in money and the sort of yeah. returns they're looking for. But they're not as ambitious as in, like, the local Nigerians in terms of returns as well. So we provide the platform, and I think very easily um, you'll see more of that money coming. Mm. In so, so Henry, nice what do you think about that kind of platform? Who should we set it up? Government or the private sector? Or both? I think both of us. I think that public-private partnerships work mm -hmm. perfectly. Um, so, for instance, I've set up what we call the Entrepreneurship Impact Center under the Pan-Atlantic University, under the um, Entrepreneurship Development Center. And the whole idea of this um, center is to generate profitable business opportunities aimed at transforming society. So, is that what you call so social entrepreneurship kind of thing? Well, I, I would say more of impact investing, which okay. means for profit with a social purpose. Okay. So it's real business. And what people don't understand that is that the biggest secret of, people, of richest people in the world is that they are solving problems. So Jack Ma will say to you, for instance, if you want to remain small, solve small problems. If you want to be really big and really wealthy, solve big problems. Because it only make, because a problem means people are looking for a solution, and so they will patronize you. Mm -hmm. So if few people need your solution, few people will patronize you. Mm -hmm. If a lot of people need your solution, a lot of people will patronize you. Why is Bill Gates the richest man in the world? There's, no country, there's, no, uh, there's almost no country in the world you go to where you don't find the Microsoft operating system being used. So he's provided a global you solution. You can run from here. Yes. Mm -hmm. So everybody needs him. And that's why he's, he will always continue being very wealthy. Why is Dangote the wealthiest man in Africa? Because everybody, we, Africa is a developing continent. We all need cement. I mean, he's got into food, clothing, and shelter, things that, we, that are recession-proof. Mm. You know, so people need I to I should go get out of this to, top talk business. <laughs> so people need to go back to the basics and understand that entrepreneurship is about creating value that is relevant. Because once you are relevant, people will patronize you automatically. Thank you very much for being on the set. Thank you. I appreciate your presence. I've been educated, and I know that real estate is where I should be going. <laughs> but beyond that, I mean, there's so many opportunities. Take, take advantage of them, mm -hmm. and hopefully you will come and invest in Nigeria. Thank you very much for watching the show today. Thank you for being my guest. Thank, Thank, Thank you. I'll see you again next week. Bye.